Thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting and, and for having the pleasure to challenge Mark. We haven't been <laughs> opposites for some time. And, <laughs> and uh, well, as you all noticed that Marcus' presentation touched everything there is to consider. So there is really, really so much about it. Uh, you, you, you speak about the role of the individual and the growth of an individual, growth of uh, individual awareness, organizational awareness, awareness of the planet, of, of us as a mankind. And then at the same time, uh, you are looking at the environment where we are living and actually the unconditional challenge that we have. So what more could there be? And uh, I have kind of a complex uh, <laughs> comments on it and so Maybe the best thing I could do, I don't know how, how you think you both, Marcus, that would be nice if I will somehow challenge you, but actually I'm presenting these questions to you as well, so if you want to comment and, and challenge Marco, but I will make the introduction first. Uh, there is one serious thing missing from your approach, or well, actually two. One is pessimism. <laughs> and, and, and you seem to be a kind of an optimist, and I will return to that. But, but there's one question that I've been thinking, I even wrote a short blog on that, because I, I put a, a fed to Google uh, the words lifelong learning, because you all probably have heard about it so much and, and how important it is. And I got about three million hits from it. Then I fed lifelong curiosity, <clears throat> and only 2,000 came. And so the question is that, how do we create possibilities for healthy curiosity that lasts lifetime? And I was thinking about what you were saying about Marco, about intentions, because that's another, I come from psychology, and if you take a, a, a cognitive psychology book and uh, search for a keyword intention. It actually doesn't exist there. It's really, really difficult to find. And I've been telling that it's one of the most underestimated qualities of human life, that we have intentions. And, but it is very difficult to share our intentions. You don't know my, what my intentions are, and there are not very easy ways for me to tell them to you. And uh, even what Marcus' intentions are by, <laughs> by giving this talk, because I, I, I feel that you are trying to wake up us mm. and, and, and help to uh, be awake mm. uh, in front of these, these challenges. So this brings me to the question that what is this character of the human of the future? And what, what are the aspects of humans that we should try to consider. And I, I think that you are putting it uh, in front of us, because if you want those things to happen, if, we are, if you expect us to learn and be curious in the right way that guides us to the most important questions and solutions that we have mm. in order to find what you call this spirituality or, or the mm. natural, naturalness and, mm. and natural relationship with nature, then where do we find this curiosity? And what is it? What is it that takes us there? I don't think anyone knows. So, so that's, that's, that's one question. Mm. Maybe, maybe mm. you can comment on that and I will leave that. And I was thinking that where are the enemies? <clears throat> because if you listen to the modern day leaders, I don't have to speak about names, but, but some presidents <laughs> and, and uh, some uh, leading politicians in, in the earlier uh, Hungary and, and Poland. Uh, I don't know what's going happening in, in Spain right now. They are not talking like that. But during my whole life, I have never seen so bad behavior from our leaders who do it openly in a world of communication. And just the uh, things that you were mm. presenting, kind of the optimistic possibilities for the, the mm. involvement and engagement of mm. everyone on the mm. earth. And then at the same time, we are facing that. So I was actually waiting for you to 
show that where are the enemies? Uh, you don't seem to have them, but of course they are implied there. And, and uh, considering I know a little bit, or I can guess a little bit of your background, and I have a feeling that you don't have a way of searching for enemies because they are, you are so, so solution-oriented and, and you want to find ways, healthy ways to grow, develop and understand the world. But I still like to remind of that, that what are these enemies that we should know? And, uh, and even, well, we are talking uh, with Timo about your judo uh, exercises and everyone of you probably already know the judo principle is that don't resist with force, but be soft, smooth, and, and, and keep that kind of freedom. So it doesn't mean that you, you can have an enemy, but it's good to know mm. how they behave. And then, of course, there's the possibility that we don't have enemies, but uh, I don't believe in that. Now, coming up from this, I, I just present some, some very general, general uh, questions to you. And, uh, and I also like to hear about your comments. So, what is growth? Uh, facing these kind of uh, challenges, then how do we, how should we describe growth? And you were talking about GPD and, mm. and, and whatever measures there are mm. to, to uh, look at the growth. And, and there are many critics who say that the current ways of, of demanding growth and and uh, expecting growth, they will somehow have very, very negative consequences to nature, to our relationship. But I was thinking, is it possible to define a conditional growth? And what could that be? And how, how, we could, that def uh, how would that be defined? And so maybe if Marco, would you like to comment on this, this yeah. individual level, intention thematics, curiosity thematics, and also why are you so optimist? <laughs> <laughs> I start. I start with the last one. Um, quite a few of you know probably the writer and author named Naomi Klein, right? Um, so, she's been a heavy critic of our societies for almost like a 20 years, a, a really, in, a, in an interesting way, a kind of a lone voice. And, and, and she actually came up with a new book uh, about the Trumpian times, which was, where was the message saying that, well, it's not enough to say no. But you need to create an alternative. You need to build another vision, another idea. So what, because if you're just saying no, that doesn't create by itself. Nothing but maybe more no's. Which sometimes is helpful too, but does not necessarily produce the solution. So we, we certainly know that there are those forces around and in, in, a, in a curious way we are living in our 1930s through right now. So we have a kind of a reflection point what happened in those times. Now we are living in a different world though, but there is still a certain analogy there that we can use. But back, coming back to this, um, optimism and, and pessimism and positive or negative, I, to me, if we're talking about the learning, I like to focus on where we can learn. And we all know that in this moment of time, we have a lot of areas that we need to be learning. Um, of course, there is not a big leap when you look at all those factors I was presenting to say that, well, no hope. This is hopeless affair to build up any kind of a next level to humanity because those incredible problems we have. Like CO2. Like CO2. <clears throat> and so um, 
and, and you could sort of all leave with that. But I think for our spirit, that's not enough. But what I'm saying is that we need to recognize those things. We need to recognize those bad things out there. We should not shut our eyes in the front of them, but face them and learn from there. And then that builds to the second issue which were, you were building, which is about the curiosity. Um, because curiosity is not driven just by nice and interesting seeing things we see around it, but it's seeing something that we see it's downright wrong or bad that should create a curiosity in us to see that, okay, how do we do this in a better way? How do we find the means to deal with these issues rather than push them aside or thinking that all the curious things rises out of positive and interesting issues as such. They can be terrifying issues. There was a psychologist who, yeah. I, I got curious about this, and, and how, how is curiosity defined? And, and he defined it, Levenstein, I think it was his name, he defined it that it, it's a gap of knowledge that we perceive. <laughs> and that, mm. of course, brings the question mm. that how do you educate people mm -hmm. that they will start seeing these gaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there is a lot of truth in that, that is about this gap. Um, is there anybody else wants to make a comment, question, idea? Oh, curious, curious. Curious, <laughs> curious ideas. <laughs> Not at this point. It's a, it's a very complex thematic that yeah. you deal with. It's such a, such a wide, wide scope mm. of areas. Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I don't know. Should we use the microphone there? Or? Yes. Perhaps I should take it there. <laughs> hey, Marco. Thanks. Um, so we live in this capitalistic world. So how do we compete with it without the intention of competition? Hmm. Mm. Good question. <laughs> um, I think the, uh, the answer that I can think of it goes in the following way. We, we just need to figure out the kind of a space where we can do something uh, and where we can uh, create alternatives to that. We have to accept that that's the way it is right now and, and recognize that as, as a fact. But we also need to think that, like those organizations that we were investigating, that you can do it in a different way. You can start to build a very different type of the community. And it's all possible if you find a bunch of people that want to do it together. And, and I see a lot of this type of the spirit in various parts in our societies. I see it in a lot of starts up, but, but I also see it in, in those kind of a seeking communities around. And, um, and I place a lot of hope because the point is, and this is also something that you can learn from the past, is that the new things always start from the marginal. They never start from the center because they are too slow. They only start to learn when they see that a lot of things are happening in the marginal. Now, all these principles that we found in these progressive organizations, and we were actually working with some of the big companies to make them to realize how they can make use of that. So hard, they are so stuck. But they will come, but it might take, you know, 20 years or 30 years, but they, they, they have a faint intention there, but it's faint because there is a lot of um, interest that want to keep the way the things as they are. And by the way, this is also something when you look at the future, we need to understand much more about those counter forces there that make us stop, make us this type of locked-in situations. Like the ones that we're now talking about, probably you've seen in the news about, you know, Fortum 
uh, buying this German uh, energy company, which is focusing on the past businesses. And we're starting to ask, the, what, what these guys are doing? Putting 8 billion to the business of the past. While Fortum has clearly declared that we are going towards the future, towards renewables, while at the same time, they're just uh, nodding gently to the past and saying that, well, this is actually the way that we, we're going to, to do. But this is, this, all this is becoming much more transparent in our world than it was before. So in that sense, this kind of a criticalness that you were asking for is actually start to be inbuilt in our systems because we have these communication channels where these critical views can be also uh, encouraged. One, one more question is that, uh, again, pushing the same question that about your optimism that, uh, and, and it's, it's very ambitious view of this growth of the spiritual nature mm. uh, or, or the way a spirituality mm. in the way we relate to the environment, to the nature and, and, and everything. So what is the rational basis of that and where are the critical areas in the society or in the education or in the families or in the industries, in the businesses, mm -hmm. that where are these kind of rational elements? Mm. Where do you think that Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. change is possible mm -hmm. or realistic. You mentioned something like the new startup cultures and, mm -hmm. and this new, but mm -hmm. do you have kind of an, because you've been looking at it very mm -hmm. widely, where do mm -hmm. you see promises? Mm -hmm. Well, I see <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, the type of the pedagogy which is uh, very much encouraged in this Snellman College is about focusing on phenomenon, so phenomenolo phenomenology, uh, what's that in English? Phenomenology, phenomenology. Phenomenology, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In Turku, uh, I'm, I'm taking a part of the new learning center that they want to build, which is solely about investigating and helping actually classes of primary schools to engage with this phenomenal learning, let's put it this way. Uh, because they have recognized that, particularly if you think about the hard sciences, the interest that, are, that can be aroused towards the hard sciences happen if you have this type of learning approach, where instead of taking theories, as complex system as starting point, you instead start to investigate the phenomena, problems, issues. And there you, through that investigation, you are actually taking them as your, as your tools. And that gives a much more inspiration to pupils to actually learn something about them and learn about the hard sciences. Uh, and I think this is, uh, this is something which I, I see is a one, one thread of thinking about how this, how this new way of learning and still within the realm of sciences can help us deep, dive deeper, deeper into the, into, into the phenomena of nature that, that should be, as I said, our source, not our sole source, sorry, I'm not saying, but our, one of the, I, I would say, key source of our inspiration to find the spirituality. But it's, it comes really through that investigation, as I said. It's, uh, if we still have a, a minute time, or are we? Okay. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my claim is that we are moving to very, uh, from the outset, very materialistic society in its discourse. And it's very difficult to be spiritual. I thought we were already there. <laughs> And, and it's very difficult to be a spiritually strong person, an open person mm. right now, especially in the academia. Mm. You are actually easily seen as a nutbag mm -hmm. if, if you start kind of uh, relating to those things, unless you have something very hard behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Do you see a change there? Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. Actually, it's kind of a theme of our <laughs> symposium in a way, as I see it. And um, I see, well, we, the future is to talk about the weak signals. I see some weak signals there. Uh, and for instance, when, when as I have been written these scientific books, and they still about there is still talk about the consciousness revolution. So, uh, and all for instance, our university management, they all had this as a as a as their learning book. <laughs> they went through the process. <laughs> yeah. and and we were talking about those issues, and I see that I saw that. Well, yeah, and that there was an there was a genuine interest. I think this. These things are emerging and coming, in, but in the slow way, because for me, it looks as if we have found already the hard bottom of materialism in our society. We, are, we have had the kind of a, the bottom touch, and now we are moving upwards, uh, perhaps without really understanding how this happens. And having a consciousness around that, but 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 I see that emerging, and it's all the time it takes a very interesting forms actually. Um, my student yesterday in Turku, she asked me that, "Are you really serious about this conscious revolution?" <laughs> Same question. <laughs> She's a very bright Chinese student. I have an international master's program there. Very, very brilliant. And, and I, I, was, I, I was waiting for the, for the next step. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yes, I'm very serious too. <laughs> and I've never heard of this before from her. <laughs> She's also already working in one of my projects too. So, but, and then we started to talk about it. And then she said, well, yeah, by the way, I can do Tai Chi and all other aspects, what I have been a little bit practicing, things that I didn't know from her. But, but so I, I see that in the different corners, this is appearing in a different forms. And that's really interesting. And that's why we need to keep this type of the seminars too. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you.